This video brought to you by EquestrianCoach.com, the world's leading equestrian education source. To understand our wonderful American forward seat, one has to have some grasp now through reading of the history. I've read a great deal, and the wonderful cavalry at Fort Riley had officers, uh, as I understand, even in the in the 19th century that were sent to Europe, principally France, uh, and later France and Italy, then again before the First World War, and then Chamberlain and others between the two world wars. Principally, the, the France, Saumur, was the place they landed then, and then they would go to Italy, was, uh, I would say, second in importance. They touched in Germany, they touched in England, they even touched, I think, in Belgium. Uh, and from, from what they gleaned, based on the French school in Saumur, and later very influenced by the Italian at Torre di Quinto, uh, Chamberlain, culled and gleaned all this information by the 1930s and it adapted it to our type of horse, which was a more of a blood horse. He was greatly influenced by the Italians of the, the European, some kind of allied games in 1919 because the Italians had great success. And they preached a much more forward seat than the French. So he, which I'm sure we all do as in our writing careers, we take this, we take this, take that, and, and our recipe comes from, from mixing ideas. And so he uh, added this Italian influence and success in these games to the French school, and he came back, and, and that, that's really how we, we got, as I understand, quite a forward position in writing. Uh, but you can see, even today, you can see the great French influence in the position, the leg position is very French, not particularly Italian. Uh, the, the contact in the lower leg versus the knee is very French, not the Italian. The hand position is very French. But the Italian, the, 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 the torso being farther forward than really any school in Europe still today, we they even sometimes talk about that or sometimes laugh about it, but with rich fellows scratch their heads and wonder why it's so successful. Uh, but the, you have to understand, a little, you, through reading, you have to have some understanding of the history. And it, it, I'm sure that it was picked up, it was, it was made very popular in this country because of our thoroughbred horse. that was so receptive to that light way of riding. Uh, and uh, until very recently, relatively recently, we had mostly blood horses. And of course, since the late 70s, early 80s, the influx of European, more half-bred, more heavy, more cold horses had come into our country. Uh, but uh, that, that, uh, that early influence w was created by the th thoroughbred horse, or was encouraged by the thoroughbred horse. I would say now we still have that uh, methodology, ideology. It is partly modified by the influence after the war of Germans, Richard Weichen, uh, to an extent, uh, although the Hungarian school was very light, Bertrand Emethy, Gabor Voltaigne, it still had a German influence. So uh, it has evolved. It's a very, very balanced seat today, very universal. It's not the extreme of 1950 of the forward seat. And I would say for the, the European type horse we have today, that extreme maybe wouldn't have been absolutely right. Uh, however, you see uh, Laura Kraut, you see BZ Madden, you see rich fellows with European horses. And I've always been of the school. I, I myself, with when I started with Val de Loire and Calypso and those early European horses for Melanie Smith, I taught her that we train the horse to go the way we want to ride. I've never had a problem uh, with a German horse. I had my last great horse was in fact a German horse and he had a very German side dam. 
uh, a horse called Rio that could get, he was very hot and a very much a blood horse, but he very easily could get timid, chicken, and cold. Uh, but I taught him to go my way. Uh, I taught all of Melanie's horses and Katie's horses when we first started bringing them. We taught them to go our way. And the, the, the difference is the emphasis, uh, which we again trace back to Chamberlain and those great officers, it is a leg-based system. The forward seat, the American style of riding is leg-based. Of course, the seat is critical. Of course, the seat is, uh, can never be forgotten. But it is a, a leg-based system, which is more Italian-French than the German, which is Dutch and German, is very seat-based. Uh, the focus is on leg riding. And uh, I still today preach that. I think, uh, I think leg riding, first of all, the, the, ride, the calves of his legs are really nearest the hind leg of the horse, nearest the shoulder. The legs influence the hind leg and the shoulder greatly because they're in close proximity to that. Uh, they, they certainly take over when you do want to lean forward and get off a horse's back to alleviate the horse faster galloping up and down hill, over jumps uh, to get off a horse's back certainly makes it easier for the horse. But you have to substitute that with something, and it is leg. And it is the reinforcements of leg, which is the cluck of the tongue, the use of the spur, and the use of the whip. The seat does take care of itself, and it's very, very important if you're able to forget it. And to be able to forget it, you have to ride a great deal without stirrups, so you can forget it. But uh, very rarely when I'm riding or jumping a hunter or jumping a jumper, I don't think much about my seat. That takes care of itself. I do think a lot about my legs and hands. So that's the evolution. And I think this country, because of its history and because, because it's so entrenched in us and Canada, uh, and to be perfectly honest, th th this forward seat has come full circle, uh, and has influenced the rest of the world to a great extent. I, I don't think we're any risk of losing it. Uh, I did see several years ago a little comment in the Chronicle or one of the magazines, is there any place today for the forward seat? Uh, and of course there is, because for fast riding it is easier for the horse and easier for the rider. So of course there's a place because it's truth. It is truth. So of course there's a place, but what tickles me uh, is uh, Eric Lamaz, Rodrigo Pessoa, Stevie Gerda, who rides now with Thomas Fuchs, and of course I was in Switzerland all during the 80s, so taught Philippe Gerda with all my clinics here. There's, a, there's an influence there in Switzerland of this forward seat, which was reflected this year through Thomas Fuchs, and uh, Stevie Gerdar, Thomas Fuchs, was a classic example of a forward seat rider. And uh, he's, as I say, handled Stevie for the last few years. So there's a trickle-down effect. Gerko Schroeder in Holland, who was second in the Olympic Games, is the epitome of a forward seat rider. He's very non-Dutch. Uh, he rides very differently. The, the, the Dutch preach from their old cart horse days, a very deep, very heavy, erect position, deep seat. Uh, Gerko rides very differently. Gerko rides with his upper body forward much of the time, and his seat in and out of the saddle, not just in the saddle. So the forward seat is alive and well, and I will believe that it will always have a place because show jumping is fast uh, and for no other reason it, it accommodates fast and uh, so I'm sure it'll always be there.